Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, Smart Take, we're going to look at diagnosing and treating preschool children with ADHD. That means preschool children four to less than six years of age. Hard to believe, right? That being said, there is increasing recognition that ADHD symptoms exist in preschool children, and in certain cases, behavioral and non-medication interventions aren't sufficient. Now, of course, you always want to start with non-medication interventions, behavioral modification, looking at the family. You're certainly not going to want to rush to medicate. It is interesting that the amphetamine compounds, such as Adderall, are actually FDA approved for ADHD in children three years and older. The other methylphenidate stimulants are FDA approved in children six and older, but both are being used when necessary in these younger populations. And this study is interesting because it's really the first long-term one-year trial of any long-acting methylphenidate compound, and that's Concerta, that's uh, Ritalin, long-acting, a number of the methylphenidate compounds in preschool children four to less than six years of age. So it's an understudied area and very important to look at. Is it safe? Can this medicine be used long-term in very, very young children? And this study said yes, that it was well tolerated and the discontinuation rate side effects were very similar to what's been observed in older children. So we've often heard about does methylphenidate reduce height and weight, and that's been a big concern over the years. So this study, interestingly, consistent with prior studies, found a dose-related reduction in the expected weight and height that was very small and decreased over time. And the bottom line is that it doesn't appear that the statistically significant change in weight or height is clinically significant. The same holds true for changes in blood pressure or heart rate. There can be statistically significant changes in heart rate and blood pressure in children and adolescents treated with stimulants, but this is rarely, if ever, clinically significant. And here's the example I like to give. A normal pulse or heart rate is typically between 60 and 100. And if a particular child has a pulse of 68 and after being treated with Ritalin, their pulse is 72, that may be a statistically significant change, but is unlikely to be a clinically significant change. That being said, we recommend regular monitoring of pulse and heart rate for children and adolescents treated with stimulants, particularly with dose increases, but even at routine monitoring to check the pulse and heart rate, ask about any cardiovascular symptoms that we think that that is warranted. One other point that I'll raise is that sleep disruption is often recognized in children with ADHD, but it appears to be independent of their being treated on medication. So what I always do is I get a sleep diary and a very detailed sleep information from the child and parent before I start the stimulant medication. More often than not, you'll find that there's either no change in sleep pattern or it even improves as the ADHD and related symptoms are treated. So I think that's important to get at baseline because there'd been this long time association of stimulants with sleep disruption. And while that may be possible, it's the exception rather than the rule. Overall, I think this was a well done report, but there are limitations. The most important one being that it was funded by Rhodes Pharmaceutical and Rhodes reviewed and gave feedback on the paper to the authors. Funding for the analyses was also provided by Rhodes. So it's noted that the authors had full editorial control of the paper and provided final approval of its content, 
But nonetheless, the sponsor, Rhodes Pharmaceutical, clearly had input into this publication. Bottom line, the good news is that it does look like methylphenidate compounds, the extended release in particular, are safe and effective in those preschool children who need medication. But I want to emphasize is that this should not be something that clinicians rush to medicate preschool children less than six years of age. You only want to do this after behavioral interventions, family interventions have been tried and are clearly not effective. And you have to measure and weigh the risk benefits. Are the symptoms so severe and not able to be controlled that it makes using medication reasonable? 